Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren and I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios and in this video I'll be showing you how I color a Mexican hairless dog. So if you're interested in seeing how I colored this drawing, just keep watching. Alright, so if you haven't seen um, my previous video, which is how I set up my sketch for drawings using the grid method, I'll leave a either a card or a link in the description box below to it. So if you're interested in seeing how I set up my sketch, um, you can watch that first and then come back to this video. The dog that I'm coloring, um, her skin is a dark gray to black color. I'm going to start by kind of lightly coloring in the darker areas of her head just so that I can start kind of visualizing the volume of her her face and I'm using pretty light pressure and I'll go over her whole head several times in colored pencil to build up the values that I'm looking for so I like to start by using just a black pencil and just lightly cover coloring in the uh, major areas or planes of her face that are in shadow. So I'm coloring the sides of her head and also the sides of her nose to kind of geometrically build up some of the volume. So I'm not going into the details right now because we'll get into that um, in the second and third layer of color. And right now my goal is just to kind of get an idea of the shape and the planes on her face. And now I'm just going into her eyes and you can see that it's that the nice thing about um, working with this darker paper is that when you use a light color and especially like for her eyes that are a yellow orange they really pop immediately because of that contrast and value difference between her irises and the gray tone of the paper. Her skin is black, but her her skin is, has a slight sheen to it, so I'm using a kind of a muted green color to kind of describe the highlights of her skin. And I'm going in on her nose, and I'm trying to slowly build up some color, so instead of just using uh, black and grays to color her, her face, I'm also trying to include a little bit of color variation. So I'm trying to work in some blues, some olive greens, and some purples into it. And so you can see that even though I'm using like a pretty bright blue right here, I'm not using a lot of pressure when I'm coloring, so it doesn't show up as a very stark blue. Um, I'm just kind of toning the, the black to be more of a cool black instead of just a straight neutral colored black. And I'm going to go ahead and start blending the first layer of colored pencil with several different size brushes. Um, I use uh, the blue handled brushes you see here are Princeton Select brushes. And that really small detail brush is a Creative Mark uh, detail brush, the one with the purple handle. And I'll leave a link down below in the description box of a great tutorial about how to use odorless mineral spirits for blending colored pencil by Lockery, and you can check that out if you're interested in learning about how to use um, odorless mineral spirits for blending. But I like to use mineral spirits because it gives the drawing a softer look, and that's kind of the, the look that I enjoy seeing in my own work. So we're going to get into the ears and I'm trying to build up the color, but ears are really subtle. Um, you'll find that I'm going to go in and the color will be pretty saturated at first, and then later on I'll be going over the ears with uh, different types of grays to kind of neutralize the, those bright oranges and reds that I put in first. So we're getting into the tiny, tiny hairs on her forehead, so even though She's a hairless dog. She does have a few hairs. 
So all I'm using is a kind of a light canary yellow and that yellow I'm using has a lot more white in it than yellow so that's why it stands out really well against the paper color. Now we're just building some texture on the nose, nose area so I'm just making small dots um, to kind of create that pebbled leather texture that most dogs have. And so you'll see that I'm doing her eyes in several layers. The first one was just to establish like what areas I think are yellow and orange. And in the second pass, I'm creating more saturation by building up color. So they stand out even more against the rest of her face. And so when I'm working, I try to work in sections in a smart way so I'm not just at a stop work completely when I'm using uh, odorless mineral spirits to blend. So you notice that I blended a small part of her upper head with the mineral spirits and I'm still free to color the rest of her face while that's drying. So I had a bad habit of ignoring ears um, during the beginning of my art journey. Uh, if you look back on my old Instagram posts, I think probably the majority of the portraits I drew, the ears did not have enough detail. And that's because I usually focus so much time on the eyes of the whatever pet I was drawing at the time, and then I just completely neglected the ears. So in this drawing, I was trying to be mindful of that and try and put more effort into the ears so that they're as developed as the rest of her face. So right here you're seeing that I'm using a clear ruler and to give myself a better frame of reference, I lined up my clear ruler with the grid marks that I had used to make my initial sketch. So that kind of gave me a reference point of how far I wanted to draw the hairs on her head so I wouldn't go too far past um, what I saw in the reference picture. So if you're finding yourself in a weird angle where it's hard for your wrist to go in a certain range of motion, uh, try rotating your drawing and all you have to do is rotate your picture you're working from as well and you can just keep working as normal and hopefully more comfortably. So I kind of like the challenge of drawing a hairless dog because it's a different texture than what I'm normally used to drawing. And I, it also forced me to pay close attention to the different colors that I saw on her skin. In addition to just trying to f find the right color, I was also trying to figure out how to work in skin folds and also the skin texture. So you can see on her, her chest, um, her upper chest area, um, it's kind of like a lightly wrinkled leathery look. Um, so to try and describe that on paper, um, I decided to kind of make random squiggle marks around her, her chest. And that kind of worked, um, I think, to create that random, random effect that made it look a little bit like leather. And for the folds on the side of her face, I found that I was getting the best results by first drawing the crease or the darkest line in her face uh, with just black. And then immediately next to it, I would create a area of highlight. So I would use either a light green or a light yellow to make the area immediately next to the darkest area, the lightest, er lightest area and that would create the illusion of the skin actually folded in on itself. And here we're just building up more, more of those fine details. 
So I found that I had an easier time to for her forehead to draw the hairs first and then color the areas in between her hairs where I needed to be a darker color. If I were to make her forehead a darker gray and then go over with the light yellow that would actually make a, a muddy color, a muddy yellow green gray color to get her hair to really stand out and be that bright light yellow. I found the best results by coloring in between the hairs. And so here we're just working on building more, more texture and more color. And I really enjoyed using this green for her face. Um, it's really subtle, um, but I think it added a lot to her, to her face to make it look a little more interesting. And now that I'm getting almost towards the end, I'm just cleaning up some of the, those grid marks. And I like to keep um, just the grid marks on the very edges on the paper until the end, just in case I need to check if something's in alignment um, during the drawing process. So at the very end of the drawing, I'll clean up the borders. I'm really taking my time around her ears and just playing with building up more of her more texture so to create those small hair marks I'm just pressing down a sharp pencil onto her ears and just flicking upwards to get it to look like a natural hair so a trick is to kind of make make your marks random if they're all in the same direction like their hairs are basically parallel to each other um, it looks a little more artificial so when you're doing hair uh, one tip is to just try and be a little more relaxed while you're making it making your marks on paper so that random mark will actually look more realistic than if you tried to create marks that all line up together. So towards the end of the video, we're just adding the very final touches. So I'll leave a link to all of the materials that I used down below in the description box and all of the product links will be Amazon affiliate links. So if you choose to purchase anything through those links, I will receive a small percentage of your purchase as a commission. Um, if you're not comfortable with using an Amazon affiliate link, you can just copy the item description and just look it up on your own and f see if you'd like to purchase that item. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to answer them. If you'd like to suggest what I should draw in my next video, you can also leave that in the comments. I would love to hear what you would like to see me do next. In next week's video, I'll be demonstrating how I draw a rose from start to finish. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification icon so you'll be notified when that video is up. I typically post new drawing tutorials every Tuesday. So if you'd like to see any future videos, make sure you're subscribed. And thank you very much for watching.